Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner, by emailing Steve McCarthy at mccarthys at amherstma.gov, that's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at amherstma.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.01 p.m. and take a roll call. Gaston? Here. Hallie? Here. Uh, Dylan? Here. Doug? Doug is here. 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 Hello, Doug. All right, so we're all here. Um, okay, so the first thing on the agenda is public comment, and this is general public comment unrelated to anything that is on the agenda. So if you have general public comment, please raise your hand by pressing the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen, and Steve will let you in. Is there anyone here for that? Um, don't think so. Okay, so let's go on to our... First item, uh, licenses, change of liquor license manager application, Town of Amherst doing business as Cherry Hill Golf Course, 323 Montague Road, manager. And this is the new one, Steve, Raynaud Harp. And the last yes. one was Barbara Bills. Is that what I saw from the application? Yes. And okay, great. Ray is in the audience. I have um, invited him to become a panelist. Okay, fantastic. And Mr. Harp? Yes. Oh, there you are. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Hi. So um, did you want to just introduce yourself and talk a little bit about? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm Ray Harp. I'm the director of recreation for the town. Uh, we I came in to the position with the with Cherry Hill as one of our um, as one of our properties here that we manage. And uh, for the last year and a half that I've been on, it has been under Barb Bills, my predecessor, Barb Bills's name. Um, we figured at some point we need to make that switch because last year she was still with us in an advisory capacity, so she signed off for us. Uh, this year she's not with us, and so we had to go to Paul to get to get his signature as a town overseer. We wanted to just change that to to my name as the new director. Okay. Wonderful, thanks. Um, thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions about this application or comments? No, if not, is there a motion to approve the change of manager application <clears throat> for Cherry Hill? So moved. Thank you. Doug, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, any further discussion about this? If not, we'll take a vote. Dylan? Aye. Uh, Gaston? Aye. Hallie? Aye. Doug? Aye. And I vote aye. That is five to zero. The change of manager application has been approved. Thank you so much for coming in um, and best of luck with everything. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. So next up is we have the lunch carts. Can we have to do the seasonal liquor license? Oh, the seasonal liquor li license renewals. Oh, I'll, the... I'll move to, I'll move to, uh, to uh, renew that license. Okay, thanks. Is there a second? Yeah, I got Thank you, Dylan. Um, any further discussion? I assume not. Um, we'll take a vote. Dylan? Aye. Gaston? Uh, oh, no, I'm, I'm unmuted. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Hallie? Aye. Doug? Aye. And I vote aye. That is five to zero. Uh, the seasonal liquor license for Cherry Hill is renewed. Thanks, Doug, for that. Um, okay, so now we get to the lunch carts. Um, so the first one is, um, Steve, are the people here for this, these two? Yes, they are. Okay, great. And we do these, why don't you bring in uh, S&P Foodies Hub Incorporated doing business as Thai Chili Food Hub. All right, so Picha, you should be um, a panelist and able to speak. Oh, good afternoon. Hello. Oh, hi. 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 Welcome, Sukicha. Um, would you like to give us an introduction about your lunch cart? All right. Um, 
one moment, please. Oh, um, sure. My name is Supisha Hillenbrand. I'm uh -huh. the owner of the Thai Chili food truck. So I have been doing the uh, farmer market at the uh, Amherst Common for the Saturday for like, um, this is my third year already. And okay. I find, um, you know, I have a lot of great feedback of, you know, like a people that came and support me. And I feel like I'm or since I'm already there in Amherst on, you know, um, Saturday, and, you know, I found out from Susan Malone and then um, that you guys do allowing the food truck to park there now. So I feel like that would be something that um, would be more, you know, something that I would like to participate and be able to do it, you know, because I find that with uh, my food that I offer that support the local farmer and stuff like that, that I can bring it to the table that, you know, the street food that I offer and I'm already there, it can be a great benefit for, you know, like a student or like a patron that coming to the town. So, and, you know, I'm thinking that I, that way I can, um, you know, doing uh, more days in Amherst. Okay, that all sounds all sounds really good. Um, yeah. yeah, we're excited about it. Um, does anyone have any questions for Supisha? Yes. Or or sorry. about the oh sorry. Does anyone have any questions for about the license or comments? Oh yes, Gaston. Yes, hi. Thank you so much. Um, we're excited to have more food trucks. Um, one, I, I guess, first question is: Have you had a chance to review the? food truck, or I, I guess that's not the term we use, but our regulations that go through the the various, I guess. Um, uh, I know that there's a three designate spot uh, location that I can park. And I know that um, I just have to, it's like a first come first serve. I do have to pay for the meter and the regulation is timing between eight to eight. Okay. Um, yeah. there, th thank you very much. Um, one of the other items that we have on the regulations relates to the the sound and and pollution that that is yeah. created by um, generators. Yeah. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about how your truck is is powered for the cooking? Yeah, my truck is powered by uh, by using the generator. Our generator is a it's the Honda. It's a pretty. It's very um what do i see very effective like um it doesn't be too too loud because right now like uh, for the past two years that i did the farmer market early in the morning like seven o'clock and you know parking on the side street and so far i never have any complaint yet and i think it's the one that we use is very effectively okay all right thank you thank you is there any other question for me? Uh, yeah, I just have uh, one question. I'm, I'm a little, little prepared looking at this week. I haven't had a chance to review all the documents. Is what were the hours of op operation that you were, you were looking to, kind of what, what days? Um, because the town on the application, it doesn't really say specifically what, what time or what day, but I'm looking mm -hmm. at between like uh, probably like some Thursday and some Saturday. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, yeah. Yeah, and were you looking to do like a uh, later evening? Um, kind of what um, was the, uh, the hours about, you're looking for? If I'm, uh, if I'm going to do it, I'm probably going to be done like around 7 o'clock, probably like during the lunchtime, like uh, 11.30 until maybe 7 that I'm looking That's for. Um, and I mean, are you looking at, at any point because we recently approved a, uh, a lunch card to... Uh, be able to operate later to try to uh, get, you know, the, the end of the night student uh, bar crowd. Is that, um, you know, an area you might be interested in, in, in trying to appeal to? Uh, with, like the, with the bar, you mean like the, the where? Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the post bar scene, you know, usually getting out, you know, oh, Mark, are you looking yeah. at to see about that at all? Or is that really something yeah, you know, for you're me, not a, For me, yeah. if there's an opportunity arise in Amherst, mm -hmm. I would I would take that into consideration because to be honest with you, I lost the restaurant during the 
COVID. So that's why I minimal myself into the food truck. And if there's a town that allow the food truck to go in and do something all year round, like Amherst is one of the surprisingly town that I didn't expect that you guys allowing the food truck to park, you know? So mm -hmm. that would be amazing for me, you know? And especially I know like in Amherst, you know, when I do the farmer market, even in the summer, it's still a lot of people walking around downtown, you know what I mean? So that's why I am just feel like Amherst would be a best opportunity for me. Well, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm not entirely sure what, uh, what what's being asked for, but I'd certainly support, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all for supporting this late night uh, food truck. I'm, I personally know about it. So huh? um, just since you're not maybe seeing the application, Dylan, the, the request yeah. was for 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. And yeah. so I guess I, I wonder whether uh, you, you may wish to, in, you know, have a, a later time in this application so you have more flexibility. Because it's the, on the application itself, it's only around from eight to eight to park. That's why. That's why I just have to put it like, yeah. So, but other than that, like I talked to Susan Malone, there are some, a lot of private property or something that if they might interested to contact me and have me park over there, um, you know, I think it might be based on the uh, owner property to write a letter or something, and then I can submit to the town. Well, didn't we just approve one, Steve, until very late, parked over by the by Kendrick? Yes. So applicants can request um, eight to eight's the default, but applicants oh, can default. request later hours if they if they so choose. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. You can oh. request some. Sorry, go okay. ahead, Gaston. Oh no, no, exactly. Just to, to say that 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 um uh th there's actually not a restriction on, on okay. that time. So would you like to apply with a later time? Um is it do I have to do a different application or can I just using the same application and extend it just in case in the future? Steve, can she do that? Just right Yeah, I think, I think she it? could make a verbal request right here and, and the board okay. can grant it. All right. If you'd like if you'd like to do that, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I would request that then. So okay. that, yeah. So what kind of time are we talking about? D like how Dylan, you, you, so you know, you have a, a view about this. What what would be your suggestion? Yeah. Uh, I mean, my suggestion here, I would say, given that uh, you know, where where that new truck is set up uh that's going to later. It is right by a residence, and I, I have wanted to kind of get down to that residence. You knock on the door and get, get their feedback, which is how the uh, the noise impact has been. I uh, you know we haven't solidified moving over to the other th side of the street, kind of right along uh, right along the same street where Spoke is. So right. I'd be down to, or I, I would be. I'd be fine approving another lunch cart there with that same kind of temporary, you know, trial period, like we're doing this for the end of the, throughout the semester to kind of see how it goes. And then, you know, we'll reevaluate for next semester, whether or not uh, we need to move it if we're going to do late night uh, lunch carts. That would be my thinking. I'd say definitely approve this till, you know, the, the later night till, uh, till the end of May. And then right. we could keep the, the times uh, for the rest of the summer. That's right. We are bringing the others back in. In, in about four weeks, is that right? To talk and see how it goes. Um, does that sound good to everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Are there any questions about that? So, Steve, how would we approve that? Um, I guess she can she can pick out a time to request to operate until, and the board can can move to so grant that. I don't know if there's the time in mind anybody has, but. Uh, I, I mean, I'll, I'll just say same thing. Let's let's do you know eight till two in the morning. You know they can uh, you know, let them pick, kind of experiment, see what hours work for them in their, their business, and then when we all kind of meet back here, I guess around June once the semester's over, we can get a sense of uh, how it went for them, and then I'll try to see if we can get a sense for for what's happening in the the neighborhood in terms of uh, noise and foot traffic. Okay. Like, all right, sounds good. Doug, okay. Doug, did you have a question? Oh, sorry. I was just going to ask uh, Steve if he recalls what we did for the other ones. What time was it? I one a.m. or two? And is there a limit on how late we can go? 
I believe that was until two, and I don't believe the regulations have any restriction on the maximum. Okay. So just so we do that, uh, and how did we, we word that last time? It was an approval until eight to 2 a.m. with a uh, requirement that the applicant comes in at the end of June sometime to see how it goes. It was a temporary, right? I'd have to check the minutes. I think it was the end of May. End of May. And uh, is that gonna be enough time? Oh, sorry, Gaston, you're muted. Oh, when Doug, did you have something to say? I think the issue that was leading us to have them come back was the location okay. more so than the time. So okay. I, I, I guess I'm right, right. prepared to move to approve this application, uh, changing the hours to 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. Okay. And I believe the late hours are, or uh, uh, different hours are restricted to specific locations. There's no limit on the number of locations that could be done for, but is there a location in mind that the board would like to grant this for or all, all pre-approved locations? Um, I mean, I, I'll, I'll take that. I, I'd like to see, uh, I guess over by Kendrick, because it seems like we're going to be getting a food cart area going there. So I'd say by Kendrick till 2 a.m., and if we wanted to approve, you know, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. for other locations as a, uh, a separate one, I, I'd support that, too. Yeah, with, with the license by default, they'd get the normal hours in all the normal locations. <laughs> okay. So the late, the, the late is just needs more specificity. Okay, so in that case, then just a, a quote to Kendrick Park till 2 a.m. until uh, uh, whenever our first meeting is in June. Does that sound good to everyone? Any objections to it or questions about it? So the motion I would suggest is to approve the license and also approve um, you know, a time, operating times until 2 a.m. in that Kendrick Park location until May 31st. Okay. Does that sound fine to everybody? Sapisha, any questions about that? Does that sound good to you? Yes. Okay. Is that, would someone like to make that motion? I think Gaston did. Oh, okay. Gaston just made so, it. Did you make well, that motion? <laughs> uh, but with, the, with what Steve added, move to approve the okay. um, application as submitted with the addition that uh, from uh, 8 p.m. until 2 a.m., uh, uh, the food truck can do business at Kendrick Park. Okay. Yeah. Until so does that mean this Saturday I can park in Amherst now? Yes. Yay! <laughs> Exciting. Yeah. That's the second for me. All right. Thank you, Doug. Any further discussion about this? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Uh, Doug. Aye. Uh, Hallie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I vote aye that it's five to zero. That license is approved. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Good luck. Okay, Thank so the next you. one is the ice cream food truck. And this is uh, Scooping Up Smiles LLC, ice cream emergency. And do we have, I will be, I actually will be, um, I'll be. All right. Um... So we did, so uh, Adele, you should be able to speak right now. Hallie, I may have uh, accidentally demoted you to the audience, but I changed it back, but you may have to uh, turn your camera and microphone on. My apologies. There we are. It's, it's okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi, welcome. So you, are, you. you have an ice cream truck, right? Yeah, my sister and I, we just started Ice Cream Emergency. It's a mobile right. ice cream truck, and it's been a blast. We actually uh, were out on the uh, town green last week um, with the fundraiser with the Daffodil Race. So we made our first debut last week. Fantastic. Very exciting. And um, um, you have, uh, you're looking for a new food truck license uh, for Amherst. And um, let's see, did everyone have a chance to look over the application? There any questions about this or comments or guest on? Well, I mean, I, I you probably heard the line of questioning before. Um, yeah. uh, and so one of them is just, have you had a chance to read over our food truck regulations? So um, 
not completely. I'll be honest with you. We, okay. we are still as we're new, my sister. And I, so we've been going for about a month now. Um, okay. We're still trying to figure out our business model and yeah. wondering if we're doing more catering, more vending and all of that. But of course, being a new business, we need to do it all. So, yeah. um, so when we heard about this um, through Stephen um, and Susan, when we were applying for the other permits, uh, we we're like, hey, this sounds pretty cool as well. Uh, to be honest with you, I've been so out of the bar scene and the late night out in yeah. Amherst. Um, I don't know where they would be, but we're definitely interested in having other opportunities to, uh, to do some vending and, and support the community. Well, it, just on the, that question, one, in addition to spelling out the, the nuts and bolts, we also have this you know, request or desire to have the less loud generators and when that's possible. And I wonder if you could comment on that. I'm also not seeing the times that you not are- the times of that. Um, so I think we would think more around lunchtime-ish um, is what I would think. And then also hearing about the late night, that might be something that we would be interested in too. So I wasn't quite sure how to how to gauge that timing, but um, I'd, I'd love it if it's a sunny day and a nice day and we don't have another event, something too, if we can just pop on over, that really intrigues us. But I'm thinking not too early, unless someone really yeah. has an ice cream emergency yeah. at eight in the morning, but usually not. <laughs> I guess you do need power. So how do you get your power? Would you? Yes. Yeah, so we have a generator as well. It is the Honda. And I have to tell you, mo multiple people have been like, oh, your generator is even on. And so I'm not familiar with awesome. how loud generators are. Okay. And, and um, I've been told it's very quiet. So thank you. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Great. Um, so are you interested in the, so I know what we've just kind of been the last two food trucks we've done kind of been granting this later night, these later night hours for that location. Are you also interested in that I'd love all location. opportunities if possible, as long as there's right. no, you know, if it really is just on our scheduling as well. If there's a something that you guys are wanting us to commit to, I just want to have transparency amongst us all, of course. So, um, but I think it'd be fun. Okay. Um, did I mean, oh yeah, sorry, go ahead, Dylan. Yeah, I was, I was just going to kind of respond to that. I mean, I think the idea right now is, uh, you know, we as the board are kind of testing out this idea and seeing how it works. You know, yeah. seeing if we get any input from the community. And the other side of that too is, yeah, we we want you guys to kind of experiment as as a business, as a food truck. You know, try it out. Does an ice cream truck at one in the morning when the bar is closed? You know, is that a killer time for you guys? Awesome, keep it going. If not, let us know that that's uh, you'll probably be sticking more towards the uh, traditional daytime hours. Sure. Do you foresee, I know once the UMass students and all the area colleges go back to school, does that really diminish from what you've seen, like all the, the night crowd and whatnot? I'd assume as much. Yes. The night the yeah. night crowd, yes, definitely. Okay, so that where it might be where we, we, you know, this month if we have a few, it'd be great to test it out. So yeah, <coughs> I'll be your guinea pig if you'll let me. Yeah, Doug? <laughs> The other thing I was thinking is that, you know, in summer, which is going to be a, a bit of a better season for you than, than January or December, I'm guessing. But, right. but the other thing is, is by, you know, the sort of default hours are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So by extending the hours, you know, past that, um, you know, in June, the sun doesn't set until nine o'clock. So people are off and out and about even with just families and stuff till eight, nine o'clock. So, like, you know, those extended hours may not, you may not need to stay to one. You can do what you choose. But but you may find sure. that there's a sufficient number of people that want ice cream, you know, into the, uh, not the late evening, but, you know, later than the sort of standard 8 p.m. time frame. So you may find that works for you. So, you know, I'm, I'm open to the idea of, of uh, you know, granting extended hours as well. Okay. So sounds good to me too. Um, so should we, if anybody has another question, shall we do a motion just like the last one? Or, and how did, does that sound good? Doug, do you want to take a stab at it? So moved. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so Steve. We'll, we'll make Steve put, Steve put in the minutes with the- uh, The same the, the the one again, except with the ice cream. Okay. And is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Any further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote. Uh, Gaston? Aye. Dylan? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Doug? Aye. And I vote aye. That is five to zero. Uh, the application is approved. It is approved. So, thank you so much. And best, thank, thank best you guys. Of luck Appreciate it. Thanks. Very bye bye. Good. Have a good night now. You bye too. Bye. Bye bye. Uh, 
Okay, so now we have a new common fixtures license application, Campus Pizza, LLC, 150 Fearing Street. And is there anyone here? Yes, he is. Oh, I'm oh, okay. inviting him to be a panelist. Okay. And this is- Hello. Hello, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so you are Campus, is it Campus Pizza? Yes, Campus Pizza on- Campus Pizza. Okay, great, welcome. So um, would you like to introduce your application? Uh, so I wasn't aware that I had to be here for it, but um, my oh, okay. name is Pinogia. Um, I'm a alum of UMass, and I just recently uh, procured the Sunset Pizza and Grill. Um, and we, uh, it's going to be a pizza place, just like it's been for I think the last thirty years or so. Um, pizza grinders, salads, and um, yeah, and we're just changing the name really. Oh, and I'm fantastic! To answer any questions you guys might have. Wonderful, thank you. Does anyone have any questions about the application? Um, I mean, I, I guess we just uh, thank you. It's nice to see businesses getting new yeah. life, and I'm I'm just curious about the continuity, whether the the the, the employees are are continuing, and I'm just wondering about how the how it's working with your your purchase. So so far, um, we we've been anxiously waiting to get approval to open. Um, to the best of my knowledge, um, there was a rotating um, employee base based on the students. Okay. And I have started interviewing and um, I'm not sure how many will be able to join me right away as the semester is ending. Got it. Um, but uh, going forward as the, as the colleges do come back, we, we do plan on having a large uh, part of our like front, front end, the counter, the delivery and everything from as much as we can from the students um, to keep continuity. We will, we will be looking to have more full-time kitchen staff. Um, so, but you know, they'll supplement and uh, we're just trying to reach out in the best way possible and, you know, make a good product and Great. keep the kids fed. So, the, you know, after they're done with their bar trips. Right. No, no doubt. And uh, is this your first uh, restaurant? Uh, no, my family and I also own the India House in Northampton. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, great. This uh, is my first solo. Um, okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Fantastic. Thank you. Ellie? Um, I think you're predecessor if you bought it from had for a period of time at least that used the byob license is that something you're looking to continue as well i think i think the students have more uh, predominantly looking at our you know at our research i feel like uh, a big most a majority of our clientele will be the students and i think they have uh, ample access to alcohol they don't need me providing them alcohol um, <laughs> so i'd rather just sober them up with food and you know um, but if there, if it, if it turns out to be something that we want to pursue in the future, I will definitely apply and um, come back to the commission to get your approval. All right. Thank you so much. Um, any further questions? If not, is there a motion to approve the common victuallers license for campus pizza? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Dylan. Any further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote. Doug? Aye. Dylan? Aye. Hallie? Aye. Gaston? Aye. And I vote aye. That is five to zero. The application is approved. Thank you I so much for coming in and best of luck. So Thank you very much. Glad you're there. All right. Bye. Okay. So that's all the licenses for the day. And now we can move on to uh, Mandy Johanneke and Rob Morgan who are here. Thank you so much for waiting. Um, and the rental registration bylaw discussion. Uh, rental re residential rental property bylaw. Sorry, and I think at our last couple of meetings we weren't able to get to this too much. And Mandy, thank you so much. She, uh, Mandy, did send around some scenarios, which I think we'd asked for about um, when uh, an appeal might come before us and what types of situations might lead to that appeal. So I don't remember. Has any, everyone looked at those? Do you remember? Have those to mind? I think I have them somewhere. But uh, since we have them both here, um, are there any questions, initial questions about it? Or um, I wonder just, if uh, I mean, I, I wonder if you if you could just kind of take take us take us through the, those examples so that we can vi visualize the the, the need and, and how well we are prepared to, to serve that need. Right, I think the the first one, and Mandy, correct me, is the the multiple 
had had a temporary permit or can and had to make or needed to make a uh, consistent repairs to the property and had failed to do so. Was that right? And yeah. then ultimately was denied. Is that right? Yeah, um, we've got a conditional permit option written into the bylaw right now for right. the inspection fails and this one, I, I, I will say, I kind of just made these up in hopes that, you know, thinking maybe these are some that, that the building commissioner might deny a permit for, but he can probably say more. But for this one, inspection happened. It's conditional permit. You get 30 days. It's still not fixed. You get another 30. It's still not fixed. So in the end, the commissioner says, I'm just denying your permit. We're, we're done. Like you're, you're just not showing initiative. Um, so, and then the owner would appeal. Right, and then that would come before us. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to, like, on what, on what grounds would we be well positioned to say, you know, Rob really screwed this up. He's not being reasonable. We're going to overturn his judgment that, uh, on, on this, on this, um, uh, inspection license. Uh, is Rob, would you like to? Oh, that. Hi, everyone. Yep. Hi, sure. welcome. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I guess um, probably not likely that you're going to say Rob screwed up and need to overturn a, a denial of a permit. Uh, I think, um, you know, the board or the, the, the commission is going to be in a position to uh, ease up on the penalty or the, the, you know, whatever is imposed on the applicant, whether it's a denial, uh, setting a time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to reapply. I'm thinking this is going to be more used in the suspension or revocation scenarios uh, where your where appeals and, and your work would be, um, you know, needed. And, and I say that expecting that we're, we're going to be making some big changes if this bylaw gets adopted on how we operate uh, currently as a complaint response only program to a more active uh, code enforcement, proactive code enforcement uh, department, uh, and and being more aggressive for properties that have non-compliance. I think we really have to make that shift. Um, and I think you know this this commission will hear appeals and be able to decide if uh, you know improvements that are proposed by the owner. Uh, some sort of a, a compliance plan or perhaps even a new owner. In some cases, the properties change hands that uh, when when during in a, a suspension or a revocation and the com the commission could, you know, hear a new owner's perspective on the property and decide to, uh, you know, set aside that suspension and, and give them a trial run or, or whatever it might be. You know, so I, I think that's going to be the role for for the commission under appeals. So it, it sounds like the 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 space would be for us to basically grant mercy. Exactly, instead of justice. But the, well, you know, <laughs> you know, this is some something I teach in my class. You know, there's ways of uh, the different ways of thinking about justice, but the um, it's just that the 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 these rules exist for for safety and and i you know if you've made your judgment rob it's based on your professional assessment of uh condition and and remediation and i i'm really struggling to see how we would feel well um positioned to say uh, no, Rob's being too strict here. Um, we 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 uh, we're gonna side with the owner. So the the bylaw is is at least in its current form is shaping up to be very prescriptive on the penalties. Okay. So if there's three offenses or one whatever it might be, however the numbers work out, and a suspension is for six months, the bylaw is stating that. Okay. So, you know, I think it's going to be under appeal where, uh, given the certain circumstance, and I might even, you know, be supportive of it, that, you know, the 90 day suspension, maybe that's enough in a case where it actually was a six month suspension. And here's why. So I, I think this bylaw is taking okay. away a lot of that discretion that we okay. have now. 
And as you probably know, we don't suspend permits. Uh, that wasn't the intention of the current program. <coughs> Uh, so I think with those prescriptive measures in place, there will be that opportunity to uh, to consider to consider certain things. And I, you know, aside from where I started with this conversation, it absolutely is an opportunity for the commission to make sure that all the proper steps were followed. Um, I'm confident that would happen, but you never know. Uh, and other people will be in this position someday. Uh, things can happen. So I, I think that is a role that that is of the commission and a, um, you know, what the applicant deserves is to be able to make that case to the commission and have that heard. Oh, so just to give them an opportunity for some kind of public hearing and, well, and, and that's what you're saying? So, so, well, the opportunity to state their case that right, maybe exactly, there was an error right. in the system in, in right. the, or a flaw in the, um, in, in the, the process that may okay. not come down to whether or not, you know, the, the, the plumbing was leaking. You know, that might not be the issue. The, this commission will not be making judgment on a code matter. That would be, you know, something that's handled through the state appeals process. They won't be, right. you won't be making decisions about zoning violations. It's more about the process and where we go from there uh, okay. to get the, get the permit reinstated. Okay. Yeah, Gaston? I guess the, the, um, so, you know, this reminds me, I guess, of, you know, very strict sentencing guidelines or something. And it, it sounds like this is being drafted so that you actually have, you don't have a lot of discretion on these questions. Um, your office doesn't have discretion on some of these questions, Rob, right? And Mandy? So we're, we're going, we're going back and forth on the final languages, you know, about shells and maize. And, you know, yeah. I, I, I think I keep trying to loosen it up a little bit, but you know, right. it certainly I mean, has, has started off to be, you know, a lot of shells. And uh, I understand why people want to see things happen. Uh, and I think we will be aggressive, whether or not, the, no matter what the language says, but I'll let Mandy add to that. Yeah, so so we've, we've removed a number of the things that would cause a suspension or revocation to begin with. And then the denial, the denial is a little more straightforward, as Rob said, in terms of if you don't meet the requirements, it should be denied, but we do have that conditional permit in there to try and allow things to be worked out before a denial. Um, but for for suspension or re revocation, what we have right now is that the code official may revoke or suspend um, when there have been more than three notices of violations um, issued within three years. And so, you know, given what Rob has said, what I could see is if, if he's, you know, if, if our town's just having problems getting compliance with someone and those three notices of violation have been issued, um, Rob may may choose to may choose to suspend. And the first suspension, we, we've got timings into how long that suspension is. The appeal allows the Board of License Commissioners to, the, the big one is to enter into the consent agreement. And so if Rob chooses to suspend, maybe that has been his decision as to the only way to get cooperation is sadly to send it to you, right? Um, for that consent agreement. Um, that, you know, in, in some sense that or or something else. I there there's other options for for um enforcement um beyond beyond the suspension, but but that's one way to sort of start that negotiation between the town and the owner if there just has not been cooperation um, is to, to issue that suspension and then bring it to you. So so I think Rob's basically right on this. Um, yeah, and, and then what Gaston said, you'd be in some sense granting that mercy, but but being that facilitator of conversation if the relationship has potentially broken down so much that whatever Rob's office has been doing has not been working for whatever reason um, is one thing I would say. But yeah, we're still going back and forth on it. I mean, I guess my, my question is, um, why why shouldn't Rob be able to establish uh, enter into the consent agreement that is a variation on the options that are now given to him? Wh why do why do you need us to get into the consent agreement? So Rob gets to issue the orders to remedy right now. 
and and those are basically for inspection violations. I, I guess there could be other ones. Rob could correct me, um, which has all of the follow up and all. And so there's a lot of leeway there. Um, I think the thinking from CRC is once Rob has made a choice to suspend that a, a separate entity or a different body would given what KP law has told us would give them the due process that KP law has has suggested we provide in the bylaw yeah I don't I, 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 I don't I don't want the board of license commissioners to just be a kind of kabuki theater so that KP law feels like they made gave you good advice um you know I I think the other thing is from from CRC's point of view and this is uh, based on conversations, given some of the things we've done with other things, sometimes getting it out of the main enforcing body can be helpful for whatever reason. But, but in, um, in those instances where, where Rob may choose to suspend, May he also choose some uh, kind of tailored alternative to suspension of the sort that we might come up with under the proposal. So his right now, and and you brought up a good point that we don't have the um, consent sort of thing within the penalty sections, <laughs> but we do. That's in the suspension procedures and and what the board of license commissioners can do but what we do have is one of the abilities rob has is to appoint a person in charge um before suspending he can he can require that a different person in charge be appointed as part of the penalties for violating the bylaw so there are some things that can be done before suspension or revocation we could think about if if this if the board requests that we put consent decree into those options too um we we can certainly think about that and i can bring that back to crc rob's got his hand yeah rob uh i just want to mention that we also have the ability to establish uh inspection schedules and that that really would be our our first approach in a situation of non-compliance is that we would we would mandate additional inspections uh, by our office, and so I think there 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 definitely would be a number of steps that had occurred before a suspension took place, uh, attempts to bring the property into compliance. Uh, these are things we do now, uh, including written agreements with with owners, and uh, sometimes tenants are involved with those agreements to get to compliance. Uh, so we would still continue to, with those efforts. I think it's one that gets past that we're not getting the results we're looking for, then, then we're faced with suspension as a real option. And, and I just want to raise my hand for one thing. The consent, um, the consent agreement is also an option for Rob once suspension has happened. So it's part of the bylaw section, I don't know what the M3. So it's not under the penalties, it's under the section with suspension and revocation procedures. And one of the things is once um, it says the code officials empowered during the course of an administrative inquiry on suspension to enter in a consent agreement. So that can be done potentially instead of an appeal. Um, So then it seems like the, the 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 genuine role we might serve is just where the the nature of the process means there's really bad blood between this owner and the code official. And and we 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 get called on as it's like, you know, they go to the other parent to 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 see what what we think. Potentially, or um, if they don't like or can't reach an agreement on a consent agreement with the building commissioner mm -hmm. after suspension, I, I could see that happening too. Yeah. Rob, did you have a question? Well, I, I just wanted to respond to that a little bit. You know, I, I, and I, 
would tell you about a recent case where the uh, landlord's attorney got involved uh, very aggressively, contacting me, telling me all the things I can't do. Um, and, you know, was really having trouble with the idea of issuing a daily fine for his cl client's noncompliance. And he filed appeal to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, to have his opportunity to argue that and, and wasn't, you know, wasn't interested in discussing it with me any further. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we still talk today. Uh, you know, it's not like we, we don't communicate with each other. Uh, but, you know, he was in complete disagreement and wanted his opportunity to take it to a higher authority and, um, you know, ultimately withdrew his appeal, you know, just before actually making his argument uh, and, and the property was found to be in compliance. But that has happened, you know, four or five times that I could think of over the years on matters that probably would be more directed uh, under the appeal of, uh, uh, of this bylaw. Uh, but the, the zoning bylaw was a place that that do it at that time. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Doug, did you have something to say or a question? No? Okay. Um, I, yes, I, yes, I, I had a uh, question. Yeah, go ahead, Dylan. Uh, is there anything this bylaw or could be considered to be put in this bylaw where it, it would just be a after so many attempts, somebody's like blocked out. There's no more going through the building commissioner, and it has to go before the board of licensing if they want something reinstated. Did everyone catch that? Um, yeah, I believe I don't believe there is. Um, I think our suspensions are six months. Right now, it's six months, and then. 12 months. And so once that 12 months would be over, I don't, if you're currently under suspension, you can't reapply for a permit. But once the suspension is over, I don't think we've got any inabilities to reapply if you're not under a suspension. Okay. Uh, yes, Gaston. Um, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm thinking based on, on Rob's comments that if we get an appeal, the party appealing is likely to be represented by counsel. Pro there's a good chance. Uh, I mean, yeah. yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm seeing more and more of that. You know, as soon as we get into some of these more serious situations, there's immediately representation, both from landlords and from tenants now that we're, you know, we're seeing quite often. Okay. And, and is the, oh yeah, sorry, sorry. Oh, I was just gonna, uh, if it's all right, Marian. Uh, yeah, okay, what I yeah. Say, relative to that, I mean, I think that parallels what we see with um, liquor license violations, and we have Brian uh, from KP that joins us. It would probably, be, it may be him, but it may be someone else from KP that would provide some support for us if we needed some particular legal interpretation on that. I mean, it's not quite as well defined as and prescriptive as the as the. Uh, liquor license violations, but but I think we can parallel that and, and we would want to if, if they were uh, coming before us to have that that support from council. Okay, uh, Gaston. Is, is there, is it an option for the commission to be able to deliberate in private over um, our, our determination in such an appeal? I mean, My, I'm just remembering when we were put on the spot with yeah. Porta, um, I mean, it's, you know, it's uh, um, to be a court that deliberates publicly on these kinds of questions that have, you know, pretty serious stakes for the party appealing. Uh, you know, that's, uh, uh, courts don't do it yeah. <laughs> if they don't want to. Um, and, uh, you know, we may have just heard a food truck <laughs> license application, and now we're called on to uh, make a determination that could have hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of implication. Um, and so it's, uh, it's a little daunting to have to deliberate over that in front of everybody. And I wonder if, uh, if it's a constitutional requirement in this town for that to go that way. 
KP Law would be the final. I was just going to say KP Law would be the final arbiter, but given what we've heard on the council about appointments and how they have to be done in public, my guess would be as a public body, you'd have to do it in public. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to suggest that we ask Steve to, to check with, with council on that because I think, you know, if there are aspects of the, of the deliberation that we might want to have, you know, it may be a thing where we might be able to go into an executive session or like you say, a sort of um, non-public component of it, but have some aspect of it definitely have to be public. So it's 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 worth getting the legal opinion about that for sure, I think. Yeah. I mean, I'll just say again, what my, my, my discomfort with this whole um, process, this whole up, up possibility is that, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not very good at um, ruling against the town um, as a commission, given the kind of work we do. And it would be, you know, it would be worse than, um, than providing such an appeal to have an appeal that, that seems to be a pure formality and, and destined to fail. And so that's why I'm, I'm being so, I guess, persistent to make sure there's actually a meaningful space for us to reach our own judgments mm -hmm. um, that, that, that may not be exactly what the town wants um, uh, and, and that we are competent to do that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think again, this sort of you know, just drawing the parallel on our our uh, our uh, liquor license hearings, those have to be done fully in public, and they are very uncomfortable when you have to do that. Um, you know, in the, in the circumstances we've had to deal with, um, it's been fairly clear uh, the 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 actions that we need to take. Um, but at the same time, I, there's perhaps a lot more subtlety and nuance to this. And, and I think that's where uh, it, it, to, to guess on point, you know, we either are a rubber stamp or we actually um, legitimately, you know, deliberate and, and uh, make decisions. And that's difficult to do in a fully public arena. So yeah, I think that's, that's well worth exploring a little bit and understanding what our options are and, and whether there can be, it may be something where there's components of it that can be done privately so that you can have that uh, richer conversation that publicly would not be best serve anybody well, quite frankly. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the only time, I think the only comparable thing that's coming to mind is when we had to uh, revoke the high horse because that uh, was landlord, I think it was a landlord tenant issue there too, right? And with lit, I think it was some, something slightly similar. And that was also, like, again, we weren't ruling against the town. It was a private individual and, but it was, uh, it was like, well, it wasn't necessarily clear cut. I think with High Horse, he, was, he did ask for extra time. Um, so, okay. Um, yes, Mandy. I, I just want to say if BLC, if the board's not comfortable with the appeals, CRC would like to hear that and know right. that. Um, right. And we'd love to hear any other options as to where the board might think it best to send appeals or whether the board would recommend we don't even have appeals. Um, okay. You know, we're, we're not set on any one thing. We're, we're really seeking your thoughts on this. And so if, if the thoughts are we're not comfortable and right. you've got a better option or have a suggestion for a better option, right. we'll take that. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Steve. I wanted to mention, I do believe that the, um, the statutory exemptions for allowances to go into executive session are pretty restrictive, but I do know that when the ABCC itself deliberates on appeals from local licensing authorities, um, they do have, you know, much more of a quasi judicial format where they'll take testimony and then, um, you know, we'll kind of end the end the hearing and send, uh, send, you know, deliberate and send their decision on at a later date. So there very well may be some kind of um, exemption there, but I do think it'll be a question for council. Okay. 
So we should find that out definitely. Um, and Gaston, I can see you have a question. I, mean, I, I think comment. that the, the 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 space that I feel most comfortable that we've talked about is where um, we can come in and help create a uh, happy compromise or we're, we're hearing a happy a compromise and um but i i i think that we haven't we haven't been able to pinpoint exactly what that would look like what case would put us in that position okay um oh there's dylan uh who, who's first dylan or steve uh, unless you want to go, Steve, I'll go. Yeah, all right. Um, I mean, I, I'll say to, to Mandy Joe's question. Uh, I mean, one, just just an, an alternative. If you're looking for an alternative, I do think the ZBA uh, is probably a board that is equipped to handle this kind of thing, um, you know, given its its nature. But I will also say, I think the Board of Licensing is, could also be well equipped to do it. It sounds like, you know, the new bylaw or relatively new board. Um, I think this could certainly be uh, an area of, uh, you know, some experimentation here to kind of figure out a good approach mm -hmm. on, on how to handle this thing. Uh, I think, yeah, as it comes to us, I think as Don certainly shown, it's really not entirely clear how we're going to handle that. But I think as a board, we're we're equipped to explore that question. So I, I think personally, the uh, board of licensing is a, is a great place to send it. Um, but I guess if, if you have a more defined idea of how that appeal should look, I do think the Zoning Board of Appeals would be a good place to send it. It's a much more established body in its, in its uh, role and, and, and how it handles this sort of thing. So I guess that's a real question there. You know, we're looking to experiment. Hey, send it over to the Board of Licensing. I'm, I'm game to try it all out, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Doug and then Steve. Yeah, I think the the couple of things I'll I'll mention is that I think that there's a, I mean I think there are particulars to work out to Gaston's point is I, I think it's right it doesn't want to be you know uh, a charade by any set, stretch but I think having you know appointed versus elected uh, citizens weigh on this is good because we have an independence and we're not as uh, not as uh, beholden to the voters in some respects that gives you you know in in most places. Uh, you want your judiciary to be uh, independent of voting uh, so they're not swayed by politics so much. I think that's helpful. I think also having a citizen group that, that can weigh in on this is, is helpful as well. It's a, it's, it, it, um, I think might potentially uh, prevent, uh, you know, like if we didn't have <clears throat> any appeal process whatsoever, then the next you know, step of remediation for these folks is to go to court because mm -hmm. you're gonna impinge upon their ability to, to run their business, right? And so, uh, this might prevent some of that, um, but I think it's it's you know the devil's in the details as you well know about um, you know sort of what parameters and and what space we're going to operate in. But I think there's there's broad reasons for for us that I think it's helpful for having an appeal process and having a group like the BLC be the be a group to do that. But anyway, I think we still have some more open questions, right? Uh -huh. Thanks, uh, Steve. Did you need to say something? Do you request another question? My hand was up from earlier, but while I have the floor, um, I would be happy to reach out to council on this question of um, executive session. Um, Mandy, would you like me to do that? Or do you have an attorney you're working with already that you think would be better positioned? So I had sent the last draft off to Paul to send over to KP Law. So I can just append this question to that when I uh, let him know that I met with you and they had the question so that it's they they send it to whoever they want since they already have a copy. I'm not sure who at KP Law he sent it to. It was probably Lauren, but I, I just can't guarantee. Okay, sure whoever thanks. it is, they'll be well positioned to answer. All right, thank you. Uh, Dil uh, we're gonna go to Dylan and then we'll get to you, Gaston. Dylan? No, I, I, I didn't have anything. I was just talking. Oh, okay. Sorry, Gaston. Sorry about that. If, That's right. Um, and, um, Mandy, since if you're going to add that question, I wonder if you can also ask them to look at the scenarios you, you came up with and, and mm -hmm. you know, have them opine on what's the kind of scenario that is really most likely to show up um, uh, and if they have thoughts about, about that. Um, 
Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm with Dylan on the experimentation. I'll tell you that the case that I, that, that made me the most uncomfortable was actually after the pandemic, when we were trying to think about how much to reduce some, some fees. And we were kind of in an adversarial situation between Gabrielle Gould mm -hmm. and Paul Bockelman. And that was very uncomfortable for us, at least from my point of view. And, um, uh, so being adjudicators of an adversarial process where the town is on one side and, uh, uh, I mean, in this case, it was someone else who we like to work with. Um, that was hard, but I can just imagine that it would, it, it might be hard in some of the, some similar ways. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Gaston. Dylan, did you have another question? Uh, no, no, that's... Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I'm seeing your yeah. hand button. It's <laughs> Oh, um, I lowered it for you, happening. Dylan. I had it up from. Okay, okay, great. Thank you. So we are going to get the opinion of the the council. Uh, Steve, your hand is up. Yeah, to, but to um, Mandy Joe's earlier question, I mean, we did have some, you know, several discussions about this before with the board, and we did have um, unanimous um, interest in pursuing this. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe to give her a little clarity, I mean, I mean is, is that still the case that you all are still interested in taking this on? You just are concerned with the, um, the, uh, the, the perception and the reality of fairness? Absolutely. I think so. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, you should all get gavels, though. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Um, are there any other Questions, anything else we wanted to talk about while we have Mandy and Rob here? And Mandy, I know you had to go around six, right? Yeah, so. I have to be at the high school at 6.30. Oh, okay, all right. Well, if there are no other questions for Mandy, thank you so much for thank coming you for in coming. and talking about this. Really, really useful, very interesting. And any other questions for Rob? No, okay, Rob, thank you so much for coming well, in. Thank you both for working on this. It's, yeah. It seems like it'll be a huge uh, improvement for the town. And, yeah, definitely. Uh, so that's great. Thank you. All right, thanks, Rob. Good night. Bye, Rob, bye, Mandy. Bye. Okay, so next up, oh, is our future agenda items. So obviously we've got to keep talking about rental registration. So, um, but I guess we can wait to hear back from the attorney before we get into it too much. And then we had, um, let's see, we had uh, Doug adult use. Is there anything going on with that? Do we want to put it on for next time or do we, we need to hold off on a little bit? No, I think, I think putting it on next time would be a good idea. I, I okay. this last night looking through some stuff, um, you know, just getting myself reoriented to where I was and what I had at the, that point in time. And so, um, you know, I'm hoping in a couple of weeks, yeah, I'll have something more concrete to sort of share with you guys on it and, and keep it moving forward. Okay, all right, great. So uh, we'll put that on for next time. I know, uh, Steve, we also wanted to talk about maybe in the, the summer, uh, uh, including, Steve and I talked about expanding the locations for lunch carts since, since we have some more interest, apparently. I think uh, making a few more locations automatic with the license would be really nice. So we'll put that on, um, maybe not for next time, but maybe towards uh, June, uh, June sometime. Yeah, and then, the next uh, meeting would be, um, excuse me, the next meeting after that would be um, June 1st. So actually that yeah. would be the day after our experiment ended. So maybe we can put that on for then and okay, great. debrief with the lunch cart operators and- Fantastic. Think about other. That is good. And then um, is there anything, a big license, anything coming up, Steve? Uh, White Lion Brewery should be for the 18th. Okay, great. So that may take a little time. Right time brewery and we'll do adult use marijuana um we're gonna are we gonna hold off on rental regulations until we hear from the attorney yes or do we want to just start talking about it next time no what does everybody think no i, okay. I mean i'd rather get don't feedback. Think, re feedback first okay is that okay with everybody all right and then mm -hmm. uh we also wanted to at some point get into the flammable flammable liquids mm -hmm. which we didn't get to do but uh that's a bigger project um very interested in that one so um that'll be sometime in the summer maybe we can start on that okay any other oh sorry um now we're on to topics not anticipated 48 hours so in wait. oh yeah oh, wait, before we, we move off entirely 
Uh, yeah. So I mentioned this when we were talking lunch cards. Uh, Cause yeah, where they, where they set up right now, their generator is not loud, but it's not silent either. And it okay. is directly outside of a residence that I can see at night, you know, lights on windows, you know, with the, with the blinds that there. there's people there that live there. Um, right. So this weekend, I want to try to see if I can just swing by the neighborhood, knock at the door, see if anyone's there, kind of get their feedback. Uh, Steve, I want to get your take. Should I come grab like a business card from you or something? So I'm like, hey, if you guys have questions or interested in attending one of these meetings to get feedback, like, you know, reach out to Steve McCarthy. Sure. Can I, can I do something like that? Yeah, you can certainly do that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Great. I mean, we could invite them to that June 1st meeting to get yes. feedback. Got it. Great. So it's Great it's June idea. 1st is the meeting. That's a Thursday? Yes. Okay. Yeah, right. when I when I get a hold of them, I'll let them know, hey, you want to give feedback? June 1st is the day. Okay. Or they can email Steve, but, you know. Or email Steve, <laughs> any feedback, whatever they like. All right. Um, okay, anything else for the agenda? No, any topics not anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting? No, okay. Um, our next meeting is, what is it, the 18th? Is the 18th at five, Does that work for everybody? Okay, great. Is there a motion to adjourn? Do we, we do have a uh, set, yeah, oh. set of minutes to review? Oh, geez, sorry about that. Right, sorry, going too fast. Did we get a chance to look at the minutes? Yes. Are there any questions about the minutes? No, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, we'll take a vote. Dylan? Aye. Uh, Doug? Aye. Gaston? Aye. Kelly? Aye. And I vote aye, five to zero. The minutes are approved again. Um, great. Now, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, we'll take a vote. Hallie? Aye. Dylan? Aye. Gaston? Aye. Uh, Doug? Aye. And I vote aye. We're adjourned at 6 or 7 p.m. Thanks, everybody. See you on the 18th. Bye. Okay. Bye. See ya. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Steve.